Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Last week, we had done the standard application. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about one way of doing a bridging application. Again, if you have any questions, um, please just send them to Holly, H-O-L-L-Y, W-C-C, at yahoo.com. And I will get to them either during or you and I can chat um, after the webinar, whatever works and is most convenient. So we'll move forward. Okay, just for a little bit of a, just to do a quick review um, of negative pressure and the contraindications and warnings with use, very important. Um, a place always wants to follow its own facility protocols, but there are warnings, contraindications that everyone has to be aware of, so we're never giving misinformation. And just for the safety of negative pressure in general, um, you would not want to use in a wound that has eschar. Um, the physician is able to either remove it with um, himself or they'd be able to put on some type of a dressing that would begin to remove that first before initiating negative pressure. And the amount of slush should be assessed before initiating negative pressure as well. Sometimes you will get that soupy slough and sometimes if there's not that much, you're able to get some autolytic debridement during the therapy. You do not want to use over a pacemaker um, or we're in a wound site where malignancy was actually had been present. So can you can use it in a patient, um, patient that has cancer um, as long as it's not at the particular wound site. Um, you do not want to use negative pressure with any untreated osteomyelitis. You want to have that treated first. Every once in a while, a doctor will, if maybe a patient is on comfort measures or something like that. But for the most part, um, osteo needs to be pre-treated first. Okay. Um, you don't want, never want to place in direct contact with exposed blood vessels, exposed nerves, exposed organs, anything like that. And you also want to use very high caution in a patient that may be on anticoagulant therapy or any medication that could increase the patient's bleeding risk. Um, so that said, um, you also want to, again, um, assess the wound making sure it's appropriate. A wound that is bleeding quite a bit may not be appropriate. Um, and right after a shop's debridement, again, this is where it's a caution. Um, physicians do place, but you just want to always make sure that that is being heavily monitored. Um, do not use in a wound that has an unexplored fistula. Once it has been explored and we know where that goes, then at times negative pressure will then be initiated. So always go through everything um, before starting. And if I do have any salespeople on the call, just be aware um, that it is important that clinicians are brought in to sort of assess what's going on and that we're not telling anyone to use something unless. So always sort of defer out to that clinician. Um, call me if you'd like. Okay, what wounds are appropriate? Okay, once you have the physician order, or a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant order, um, you can start looking at acute wounds, surgical wounds, chronic, vascular, arterial. Um, sometimes we use them in wound drainage management situations. Um, diabetic ulcers, pressure ulcers, right through stage through two through four. Um, and some physicians will order over a graft. Um, and again, that would be you know, there would be certain circumstances you may not use that, but again, you would then follow the physician's protocol on how to actually treat that wound. Um, we want to just be careful once we've decided that it is going to be used. Just know that the information in this webinar is generalized. So it's a full assessment is actually going to have to be done before making the determination. So these are all general ideas. Um, if you have any questions, again, my email is right there, and I'm always available to answer questions, so please take me up on that. Okay, so here we have the Uni Negative Pressure Black Foam Dressing Kit. 
Um, it contains the black foam, the uni drape, the suction dome, and the adapter, which is fitted already on to make it easy. That black foam is a hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't like water. Um, and that's why it is such a good conduit to transfer um, any type of exudate through and out into that canister. Here it is opened and I will show you, I can, okay, right here. Um, if you notice, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but great cap, great ability, lure lock system, so a nice tight fit. This is our dome. This is our black foam. And this is our very one, two, three easy drape. Um, and as a nurse, I absolutely love this drape. It works very well. So items needed before you're starting. You want to get a really great pair of scissors. Um, technically, these scissors are not always the best to cut with. A straight pair sometimes is much better. Um, and a larger pair works very well with the black foam. Um, skin prep. You want to have saline solution. So here's some bullets, but you'll also want a bottle of saline as well so that you can do a really great irrigation some type of a measuring wound device. And usually what I do is bring in some four by fours um, and something to dry the peri wound area. So I'm guaranteed to get that nice seal. And a great flashlight is something that's always needed um, anytime we're looking at wounds. So we're gonna assess the wound first to find out if appropriate. We're gonna look at where the placement is. So we know if we're doing a bridge or we don't need to do a bridge. Um, so here we have a wound that probably would be bridged. Use your me measuring device to accurately measure your wound. Um, you may want to have some sterile Q-tips so that you're able to measure your tunneling, your undermining. Efficient irrigation of wounds is very important with negative pressure. You want to, again, follow your facility protocol and irrigate both wounds, because here we are doing two different wounds. You want to irrigate both of the wounds as directed by your facility. Uh, most of the time, you're going to irrigate with normal saline, but at times, you may actually need to irrigate with something such as sterile water. Um, if maybe you're using a silver product that isn't able, it's not compatible with saline. Um, and so here, we're going to do this, and we're going to make sure we're drying that peri wound area so that when we do put our transparent on, we'll get a nice seal. Um, after proper irrigation, you wanna be sure again to dry those areas and you wanna, now you're gonna apply a um, protective barrier. I do wanna talk for a second about the irrigation pot. Because you're using foams, things are going in, especially to undermined areas. That's a time when you really do want to thoroughly irrigate so that all of that is loosened and comes out of the wound and doesn't become part of the wound. Okay. We're going to protect the peri wound. Here we're using skin prep and we're going to go basically around and pretty much as far out as you're going to be putting that transparent drape, so we're protecting that area. There are non-sting skin preps also. If you are using those, make sure you leave a little bit of extra time to dry um, because they take a little bit longer. And also, another great way is to put a transparent on around your wound for example, this area seems very shallow. You might want to extra protect this by putting a little bit of transparent around this area. So we're really protecting our wound right up into the actual edge of the peri wound. Now, here are our two wounds, as you can see. So this is our first step. Once we have all this area skin prepped in here, we're going to be putting a layer of drape down to protect the good skin so that we're able to put our bridge on. So we're pre prepping this at this point. You basically wanna measure the drape and what we're gonna do is cut a piece that literally goes from this edge to this edge and we don't wanna leave anything exposed between the two wounds. So here I'm just looking at the length that I'm gonna need. 
you generally want to use as little as necessary of the drape. But in, in the part of bridging, you want it wide enough so that when you put your bridge down, there's no overlap on good skin. The foam should never be on that unprotected healthy tissue. So let's look at how we did this. Here now I've cut a piece of my 123 jape and I'm now laying it down. And as you can see, I've cut it a little bit on an angle so it's gonna go right up to the edge. I trim it to make sure it goes right up. And then I'm just gonna peel off number one, two, and place it down. So I'm creating that nice bridged area. And here it is, as you can see, it goes right to the edge. You don't want it to go into the wound, but you do want to get it right up to the edge. So you're applying it here. Um, and here I did put an arrow so you can see the drape is very easy to use. And if you hold the blue with one hand, you're able to right here on the perforated edge actually peel this up in a way. So it's very easy for nurses to use. This straight works literally fantastic. Um, all right, so here you have created your bridge, and now we're just going to pull off the blue tabs at the end, so we basically end up with this right here. So you have a nice, and it's wide enough to now place the bridge, um, and it will protect your good skin. All right, and now here's our black foam. So you're gonna get a great pair of scissors. So it's easily cut because you never know, you may have to actually flay it as well. Keep in mind, as you fill the wound, you never wanna leave any dead space. So you, in some wounds, you may actually need two or three pieces of black foam. If maybe artistically you're not able to cut in one piece, you may have to stack them to get a certain, um, a certain height so that you're making sure that everything is filled if you have a deep wound. Um, so here's where you get a great pair of scissors. Um, sometimes you may need, um, again, in a shallow wound, that's where you're gonna turn around and you're gonna make sure you're protecting your good skin with some more drape. So here I've cut the foam and I'm cutting it away from the wound bed. I'm not cutting over it because I don't want any accidental pieces to drop into my wound. Um, and we don't want any fragments. You're also gonna dust this off once you're done cutting to ensure all those fragments. So go on. And here's wound number one. So I placed the foam in, and as you can see, it's a little bit higher because as it compresses down, I don't want it to compress so much that basically then I have dead, created dead space. We don't want it to sink too far in. So it just needs to come up a little bit higher than the wound itself. Okay, so we've got, here's wound number one, and as you can see up here, we also cut a piece of black foam and we put it in wound number two, which is right here. So we have black foam in both of them. In reality, when you're doing bridges and you're doing them to the side of bodies, it's always great to have another pair of hands to sort of help hold things a little bit. Um, so the foam again should allow for the dressing to fill the wound cavity without overlapping. As you can see, it's not overlapping on any of the good skin. And you're gonna gently place the foam in. You never wanna shove it. Okay, so this is the area where it's protected with the drape. And now I've cut my bridge. And if you notice, I filleted it down to be a little bit thinner um, and I'm overlapping. So here you see it's overlapping up here and I'm overlapping up here because it's very important that they both touch so that it will activate sort of as a conduit to both areas. Um, remember this wound drainage is gonna travel from whichever wound you pick, it's gonna travel along to the other wound and be removed. So we wanna make sure that we have that overlapping. So we wanna stress that you can see it here, you can see it there. Okay, now I'm going to cover everything. If for some reason they're a little bit spread out, you may need two pieces of drape, but the drape will now cover both of the wounds, so you need to decide where you'll be cutting your hole. So we'd either be cutting the hole over here at wound one or over here at wound two. So this is where I'm basically trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to be cutting my hole right here for the placement, and 
that would be where my dome site would be going. So it's very easy just to fold the transparent and cut. In that way, you're not creating maybe a slit in the wound drape, which could actually rip and then cause a leak later. So this is a very easy way of doing it. I'm peeling off drape number one, and then I'll be flipping it over and placing it down. So as you can see, here's my hole that I've cut. That's going to go right over here. And now you just need to put position in. Okay, so here we are. We positioned it. Our hole is on here. It's traveling down here. You might, for example, on this area, you might want to put a little tiny slit right here so it follows the curves of the body. And we're just lightly pressing. We're not pressing down on the foam. We're just going around the edges and pressing. And as you can see, let's see. I don't think we're removing tight. Here we are. All right, so number two of the drape is from underneath. Again, very easy. You go underneath, you just pull it out, and you follow it down with your hand. Um, and again, you'd very gently press down. The edges are sealed. Okay, so we're, now we're taking off number three. And here you go. You're going to hold this piece of blue tab, and right at this edge is where this peeled up from. And it comes up so easy. So you're not struggling with the drape. As long as the nurses that are dealing with this know that it's just hold this blue and peel from here going that way. It's the most friendly drape I've ever used. All right, so now the whole thing is covered. And here we want to go around. And the most important thing is that we go around the edges to make sure that everything is completely sealed. There's no leaks. Okay, then you're going to take your dome and you're going to peel off the black backing. And here's basically the dome top where the hole is going to meet. Very important to place that so it does align. Place that down and again we're just going to go around and make sure that everything's sealed. So you've done that, you're just gently sealing the edges. And I had my tubing come out this way, but again, as you place the dome, this is where you're going to decide which way your tubing is going to come out. And that would be based on the patient. There is a little tiny, um, almost um, faint squiggly line on the top of the drape, right about here, where you're able to, again, just to grab that and peel it completely off. Um, it's a little hard to see, but once you know where it is, once the nurses know where it is, they're just able to grab it and peel it right off. And then we're just going to gently remove those blue tabs. And as you can see, your dome is all lined up. Everything looks nice. And we're just peeling this. Now what I'm doing here is creating almost like a chevron because what I do want to do is anchor down my tubing. I don't want to take any transparent and go completely over my dome. I've seen that done. That's going to actually affect um, the air permeability. It needs a certain amount of air and it needs to be permeable. So I don't want to cover my entire dome, but I do want to anchor down the tube so that it doesn't get pulled up. Okay, so here's the chevron right here. Everything's anchor anchored down and secured. And this is basically what it looks like. Okay, so you can see here that this wound right here, okay, is actually the drainage is being pulled up through here like a conduit all the way up through the black foam into the second wound and then out the tubing to the canister. So here's where you're going to connect your tubing to your negative pressure device and follow your physician's orders for what it's set at. The normal for black foam is usually negative 125 millimeters of mercury. Um, some physicians may choose a different setting, usually lower, um, and then they'll choose whether it would be continuous or if it would be intermittent. And at this point, you want to monitor the patient. And you can always reach me, reach me at this number if you have any questions. Um, and the whole idea of these 
are to strengthen clinical confidence. And I appreciate your time. Let's see if we had anything else. You can follow us at Equinox So2 Medical. And we put it right here as well. And thank you so much for joining us. Like All right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, again, this is Joey Mallory. We, we really appreciate it. Uh, again, I want to emphasize this webinar will be posted on our website as well. Uh, it's going to be under the YouTube uh, video under our webinar or under our how-to videos on our website. If you haven't checked our website, go to www.equinox02.com and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, all the social media, we're active. So uh, you can follow us at Google Plus, we're active. But um, keep an eye out on, in several weeks, we're gonna send out another, um, another invite. We are going to do our last uh, installment of, our, of, of, of this webinar, which is going to be offloading uh, the wound, uh, which means, uh, how, how would you uh, describe it? It's the... very similar to bridging, but instead of bridging two wounds together, you're actually going to bridge to an area of the body to offload so that no one is laying on a dome. So if it's in an in, sort of an inconvenient area for the wound, we can put the dome in another area. Exactly. So it's very similar to the bridge that we just did, just with a few little tweaks. Yeah. Uh, so it's really helpful in regards to some of the patients uh, that uh, end up sitting on a dome or whatever, and you want them sitting on a dome, a uh, very complicated area. So uh, we'll show you how to do that, uh, which is coming up, I would say two, three weeks, you we yep. should be up. Uh, but the invite should be coming up in a week or two. So keep an eye and out on that. And feel free to email us so that we can communicate with you as well. Yep. Again, her email uh, is holly, H-O-L-L-Y, W-C-C, at yahoo.com. And her number, let me go back to her number. If you want to give her a call directly, her telephone number is 401-808-9301. Again, it's 401-808-9301. Again, the email is holly, wcc, at yahoo.com. Thank you so much, and hope you guys have a good day.